All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am very excited to have Irene here with us. I wanna take you through a couple of mechanics of this and then I'm gonna turn it over to the person you all came to see. So our event guidelines. Um, thank you all for saying hello in the chat window. We really appreciate it. We want to know where you're from, why you're here. It's great to get to know you, so thank you. The chat is great for answering quick questions between each other, between us. But in general, if you have a question that you want Irina to answer during the Q&A at the end, please put it in the little Q&A window. Um, you'll see it at the bottom of your Zoom window. There's a little Q&A button. If you click it, you can ask us questions, and that's where we'll be pulling from for that. Um, this event will be recorded. So you, you, your video is not on and you're muted. So we won't hear or see you on it, but we're gonna post it afterwards. And obviously if we answer your question, that'll be recorded. The place you can go and get the recording or let people know to watch it is at meetup.com slash blog. That's our blog. You can also subscribe in the upper right hand corner so you'll get an email whenever we post new things. So we're really excited to offer that and please do check it out. I'm gonna turn it over to Irina to run through what we're doing today. And I'm excited to get started, Irina. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Irina. I am so excited to be here with you all. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join. It's been really awesome to see all the comments and how many people actually noted that this wasn't their first time. So great to have you. Um, we are going to uh, have this introduction for just five minutes and then we will get through meditation and journaling about 20 to 25 minutes stick around for the end because i am going to talk about some practical tips on you to know if you are um, curious about having your own meditation event and then at the end we'll have a q a session as dan said um, pop your question in the q a chat below and uh, we'd be happy to go through as many as we can. Dan, can you go next slide? Thanks. So what you need if you want to have your own event, such as this one, is reliable internet, of course, a Zoom account and link, a quiet space. Uh, and I linked, um, there is an app called Crisp, which minimizes background noise. I'm not using it right now because I am in a very quiet room. But what this app does is it picks up on your voice and lowers everything else. <laughs> so it's great to use if you are in a noisy space. Um, a plan is good to have, but also an ability to be flexible because it's very possible that your plan won't go exactly the way you thought it would or something come, would come up. So just the yeah, trusting that everything you did was enough and that whoever needed to benefit from it did and letting go of the expectation. And then last but not least, optional microphone. As you can tell, I'm not using one. Again, I am in a quiet space. So that works for me. Cool. I think we can go to the next one, which is the event itself. So again, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm so honored to be here. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe during this weird time. Um, just a quick question in the chat. Is this anyone's first time meditating or journaling? Probably, yes. Yeah, wow. Cool. Thank you so much for coming and for trusting me with your first ever meditation. Great. We're going to have fun. You're in great hands. So uh, as a beginner, if this is like, again, if this is your first time meditating, expect to be distracted, especially um, with not having any kind of experience before. It's totally okay for your mind to wonder. And that's okay. If it does, just bring it back to my cues, bring it back to my voice, bring it back to the sound of your own breath. And you'll be okay. All right. Um, yeah, great. Great to see the comments. So let's just all start by taking a really big, deep collective breath. Whatever was happening on before this, whatever you have to get done after this, we can put it aside and I promise it will still be there afterwards. So wherever you are, just exhale everything out, 
with an S H. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold at the top. And then open your mouth and let it go. We'll do two, we'll do two more just like that, but with eyes closed. So I'll invite you to close your eyes. Take a really deep breath in through the nose. Hold it at the top. And then open your mouth and let something go. And one more really deep one. And then exhale. Open your eyes when you're ready. Okay. Um, if you've read the events description, you'll uh, you might have seen that the theme of this event is embodying all emotions, which I thought would be great just because of how much is going on right now. It's really a time that probably none of us have ever experienced, and a lot of things are coming up for the first time ever. And to start us off, I'm going to share a story that I heard from Tara Brack. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Um, if you've never, um, if you haven't dug into any meditation content or teachers, I'm going to put her name in the chat. Tara Brack. She is a great resource, has lots of books on radical compassion. Yeah, Calm, somebody said, great app. And so there was a story that she was talking about uh, with a friend of hers who was diagnosed uh, with early onset Alzheimer's. And he was a meditation teacher himself. He was quite, um, I would say older, <laughs> much older. And when they were talking about it, she asked you know, how he was dealing with this diagnosis and just like noticing the symptoms and the effects of it come up. And he said, you know, I'm really, I'm okay with it. I look at it as if leaves are falling from a tree. You know, the tree is still there and it's just a season. And he shared a story of um, a class that he was teaching. And in the middle of the class, he forgot where he was and what he was doing, which you can imagine is very scary and overwhelming. And in that moment, he froze stopped, closed his eyes, and started naming his emotions out loud and bowing to them. So he would say, overwhelmed, bow, confused, bow, scared, bow, nervous, bow, frustrated, bow. And he kept doing this until eventually he calmed down and once he did, he like looked up at the class and apologized. And the whole class was looking back at him with this awe of, thank you so much for sharing that. That was the best lesson we've ever gotten. Um, so that is going to be the theme we're gonna go with. Embodying our own emotions as well. Looking at them as teachers, honoring your feelings instead of turning away from them or hating them. Um, but by doing that, we get to the core of what's really going on and what to do next. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes once more. And if it helps you, you can place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And begin to turn your attention inwards. You'll want to deepen the breath in. And then exhale completely. Again, inhale, try to breathe into your hands if, you, if they are on your body. And exhale. Again, inhale, feeling your ribs expand, feeling your chest expand, feeling your belly expand. Hold your breath at the top. Take in a little bit more. Tiny little sip more. And then open your mouth and exhale. Keeping your eyes closed. 
Begin to notice how you're feeling. What you came to this session with today and acknowledging it. When we meditate, it's not that we are trying to not think about anything, but instead we become aware of what we're thinking about. We get to see what our mind is full of. So again, just noticing what you're feeling. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. And if so, what would it look like if you were to create some space for that? Or maybe you feel a lot of joy today. And what would it look like if you could really allow yourself to feel that joy? Maybe it would mean smiling from ear to ear. Staying aware of the teachers that are your emotions and feelings as they're coming up. They may be expressing gratitude for their presence. Acknowledging any feeling in you that you might want to part ways with, even if it's just for a short little while. And if so, you do that by thanking it for coming and try to release it with the next exhalation. Now we're going to go through a short breathing practice. So wherever you are, exhale everything out with an SH. Forcibly push the breath out. And then begin to inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Hold it in. And then exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay empty. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Stay full. And exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay empty. Notice how quiet it is in between the breaths. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Hold it. Again, notice the quietness. And exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay empty. Maybe curl up your lips into a gentle smile. And then inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Stay full. And this time you're gonna open your mouth and just let something go. <sighs> Bringing your breath back to normal. Noticing if it's now slightly easier to breathe, breathe in a little bit deeper than before.
bringing your awareness to any sounds that are occurring. It might be the sound of my voice or any house noises from wherever you are. Maybe you hear a conversation in the background or birds chirping outside. Now I'll invite you to bring your awareness to the physical sensations. And that might mean your sit bones getting in touch with the ground or your hands resting on your lap. The sensation of the air entering you slightly cooler on the inhale and slightly warmer on the exhale. Noticing our sensation helps us ground into the present moment. We're going to take a few more deep breaths and we'll do it again all together. So wherever you are, forcibly exhale everything out. And then begin to inhale very slow and deep in through the nose. Keep going. And then exhale. Notice how your muscles relax completely as you do so. Inhale again through the nose. And then exhale. And one more really deep breath, the deepest breath you've taken so far today. And then open your mouth and make some sound as you exhale it out. Then keeping your eyes closed, you're gonna bring your hands together and begin to rub your palms. Just creating some heat, stimulating the nervous system. And then you're gonna place your hands on opposite shoulders. This is a grounding practice, but it also looks like you're giving yourself a hug. And that's nice too. Maybe you really needed a hug from yourself today. And when you're ready, I'll invite you to blink your eyes open. Welcome back. I hope that you feel a little more spacious after that. Okay, and now we're gonna get to the journaling part. Um, I'm just gonna give you a minute. If you don't have a pen and paper, I'll invite you to go get it. And I would really recommend using a pen and paper uh, as opposed to your phone, but this is completely up to you, whatever you are more comfortable with. Um, someone asked if the session is going to be recorded. It is going to be recorded and we're going to post it on our blog later. You're totally welcome to check it out. Um, okay, so is everyone ready? Everyone has their pen and paper? Uh, we're going to link the blog at the end. Okay, great. Okay, journaling. Uh, if you've never journaled before, I so highly recommend it. It's really, really powerful. Um, I use it uh, as part of my everyday routine, even if I write three words. Just really helps to get it out of here and onto uh, the onto paper. Okay, uh, so I do have a few questions prepared, but before we start, I just want to say that 
I'll invite you to be completely honest and vulnerable as you're answering these questions. You don't have to share them with anyone but yourself. They will stay in your notebook. Perfection doesn't belong on the page, but authenticity and truth telling does. So allow yourself to flow without a filter or a judgment as you answer these questions. And allow to just whatever wants to come up to come up and to get out. Okay, so the first question is, uh, and you're welcome to just write it as I say it. It's what's going on in my inner world today is, and then I'll invite you to answer that however you'd like. Again, what's going on in my inner world today is. And if you feel stuck on answering, just write something. Even if you write something, 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 eventually you are just going to, something is gonna come up, I promise. Okay, finishing up. Um, the second part is, I'd like to let go of, and then whatever you truly want to let go of, or you feel that you need to let go of. So again, I'd like to let go of. And trusting that whatever comes up is, exactly what you needed to write. It might be an emotion, it might be something physical. Maybe it's a person or an experience you're holding on to that is no longer serving you. another 10 seconds or so, so finishing up. Um, before I get to the next question, I just want to comment on something. I noticed that a couple of people wrote that they'd like to let go of fear. Me too, but what I wanted to share is that I was listening to a, um, a master, a, pod, a podcast masterclass by Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't know if anyone's familiar with her. She is the author behind Big Magic and Eat, Pray, Love. Amazing author. I love her work. But she was talking about letting go of fear. And she was actually making the argument that we shouldn't let go of it. Um, how being fearless is not something we should strive for because 
um, who do you, <laughs> uh, who do you know that is actually fearless? She said, those people, that's not normal. It's so normal to have fear. And instead of being fearless, what we should strive for is to be brave. Fear is there for a reason. It's a great teacher. Um, yeah, great, great comments in the, uh, in the Zoom chat. Great, so let's go with the third one. And um, so this follows up on the second question, which is I'd like to let go of. Now that you've let go of this and you've created some space, what would you like to bring in? So the prompt is I like to bring in and then right away. Peace and love, positive energy. Great, great answers. Serenity. Deeper sense of purpose, love that. Creativity, yes, yes. Happiness, calmness. Mm. Gratitude. Ooh, great answer because our next prompt is going to be about gratitude. Um, I just want to comment that we are going to go a little bit longer, just a few more minutes. Um, I was supposed to finish now, but oops. <laughs> okay, uh, so our last prompt is about gratitude, and it is something I'm really grateful to have during this time is, again, something I'm really grateful to have during this time is, and I'll invite you to even make a list if that's easier. Maybe you're grateful for your morning showers or having your family in the other room. Can gratitude be found in the hardest of times? Someone said they're grateful for their dog. I wish I had a dog. <laughs> Someone wrote they're grateful for Zoom. Me too. <laughs> Technology. Uh, so finishing up whatever you're writing. Oh, thank you, Diraj. Um, great, so I hope that you finished writing. We are now ready to close the meditation part but I would love to close this off with a poem that is by Rumi, if you are familiar with him. If you're not, he is an amazing poet. And I'll invite you to listen to this poem with your eyes closed and your hands on your heart. It just really allows for a bigger tuning in to the words and to the poem. So again, I'll invite you to Close your eyes, place your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. 
Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. I love that poem. I get goosebumps every time. Um, open your eyes if you haven't. Uh, that was it. Three, three, three. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. We are so grateful for you. Um, and yeah, I hope that you and your family are staying healthy and safe. And even in the hardest times, again, can you still find something to be grateful for? Um, we are now going to go through some questions. So if you have any, please just pop them in the Q&A chat. Um, I am now no longer able to keep up with the chat. <laughs> There's just way too much stuff there. But I am going to go in the questions. Hmm. So someone asked, can you discuss the benefits of meditation? Yes. Uh, there are so many benefits. It, the list goes on. So there are mental benefits, physical, emotional, and even spiritual. But spiritual is completely up to you. With the mental, it helps with focus, um, with Productivity, even, um, I meditate every morning and I notice the days I don't meditate and the days I do meditate. Um, calmness uh, reduces anxiety, worry, fear, like all of these emotions like that we brought up. And not only does it reduce them, but it allows you to notice them, especially with emotions that are maybe coming up for us that we're not mindful of it's really helpful to notice them because then you can choose how you are going to react. Um, so that's the other benefit. Uh, it allows you to be responsive instead of reactive. You'll notice a lot of people are very, um, they're like a sleepy volcano when something bothers them and they just erupt. So with it, it gives you the chance to calm down um, with the physical, uh, again, mindfulness, you could go into the way that you consume your food. Uh, instead of just shoving it mindlessly, you're actually aware of what you're putting into your body. Uh, it improves your sleep. Yeah, that's, I can go on and on about this, but if you are interested in meditating more, there are so many, there are so many resources available online that you can check out. Um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, next one. Do you have any tips for a candlelight meditation? Yeah, um, candlelight meditation is pretty simple. Just light a candle, put it in front of you, and uh, it would be what's called a open, like open eye meditation. So you would be doing fire gazing. And a really good tip for it is to start at the bottom of the fire and then very slowly uh, follow your eyes to the top of the flame. And, uh, or actually, sorry, let's go the other way. Starting at the top of the flame, moving your eyes down until your eyes close, then opening them up again, going up, going down, closing up, down. And uh, for as long as you, uh, as feels comfortable to you, you can go for a minute, two minutes, you can go for 30 minutes. Um, yeah, it's a great uh, meditation, just fire gazing. Uh, is there an online journaling app that you can recommend? I don't really use online journaling apps, mm, but I can recommend uh, Yoga Girl Daily, which is a podcast. Uh, some of the stuff that you heard uh, today, like the poem I got from that podcast, it's run by this woman uh, whose name is Rachel Brayton. Again, the podcast is Yoga Girl Daily. 
And what she does is Monday through Friday, she has uh, little prompts. Uh, some of them, I think once a week, she will have a meditation prompt. Then every Wednesday, she'll have a meditation. Uh, I think every Thursday is a gratitude practice. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. Sorry, I don't have a, a journaling app. I don't use them. Uh, what I do for journaling instead is I just open and whatever I feel like writing, I write. It just helps to um, get that out. There is this book called The Artist's Way. And in The Artist's Way, um, she recommends doing what's called morning pages. So as soon as you roll out of bed, grab your journal and uh, do three pages just whatever comes up. And again, I, uh, even if you have nothing to write about, just write, I have nothing to write about. And then write it again, write it again until something else uh, comes up. And I promise you something will come up. And also a lot of people are sharing great journaling apps in the chat. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. Can you see or hear your attendees during the webinar? No, <laughs> everybody is muted. Uh, can Meetup have more of these, also art journaling? Uh, we could. Thank you so much for your feedback. We are definitely, uh, this is a new program, so we are reviewing everything and learning along the way. So your feedback definitely helps. Uh, is using a pen and paper to journal a lot better than using an app on my phone? This is completely personal. I think so. I just like having a pen and paper. Uh, when I use my phone, I get distracted because sometimes I'll get a notification and I open it. And then now I'm looking at something else for 10 minutes and I forgot that I was supposed to journal. So I do really like having, I have a journal right here. I have a big one. I, I write a lot. <laughs> I, like I said, I wake up in the morning and I just, whatever comes out, it's very therapeutic for me. Um, when would you say is the hardest moment for you to meditate? Mm, it depends on the, yeah, I, I, it's hard to answer that because sometimes for no reason, my mind is all over the place and it's really hard to meditate. But I find that the moments when it's harder, the hardest for you to meditate are the moments where you need it the most. So if you can really push through the challenging um, time, the challenging moment, you will see a lot of benefits on the other side. Where do you get your journaling questions from? I came up with them as I was uh, brainstorming the theme of this event. Uh, these are just some questions that I came up with. The, the two questions of what would I like to let go of and what would I like to bring in are questions I ask myself probably every month because it's very normal for us to grasp onto things that do not serve us. I actually have a really great story I'd like to share um, about two monks who were walking on a journey. They were going somewhere and there was a river crossing and an old woman standing by the river he asked for help to cross. So one of the monks picked her up carried her across the river and then put her down and they went on their way. And so now the two monks are walking for like two or three hours. And the other monk finally can't take it anymore. And he says, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe that you picked up that woman. You know that we're not supposed to be touching women. I, I can't believe you did that. And the first monk started laughing and he said, I, I put that woman down a long time ago. You're the one that's still carrying her. Uh, so that story basically shows that a lot of times we hold on to things that are only doing harm to us. So with journaling, doing, asking yourself this question often of what do I need to let go of helps you to declutter and create space for something new. Um, name of the poem, please. Uh, I believe it's called Guest House. Guest House by Rumi, and Rumi is spelled R-U-M-I. What are your thoughts on Kundalini meditation? So I love Kundalini. That's actually been, um, I've been doing Kundalini every single morning. 
and yeah i i really really love it it is maybe when i first started doing yoga and meditation which was probably like seven or eight years ago i did not resonate with the kundalini practices they were really challenging it's a breath work um and but now after some time i really really fell in love with it uh kundalini again is it's a breath work I, I, there are breath work exercises which can be quite challenging and you do them for a few minutes a lot of breath retention holding um what kundalini meditation believes is that we have an energetic um that there is this kundalini energy that lies dormant at the bottom of your spine and through various practices like yoga and meditation um this energy starts to uncoil imagine it like a really coiled ball of yarn and it starts to uncoil um, eventually waking up but through kundalini yoga instead of it going through this process it just shoots right up and so people would call it like a kundalini awakening it's interesting stuff uh, i recommend looking into it more if you're interested i'm not uh, an expert by any means but that's as far as i know um i it's 344 we are supposed to end in a minute but i'm gonna stick around for another 10 15 minutes just to answer some more questions so if you have to go if you have another commitment um thank you so much for coming again uh, we are so grateful for your presence um i was supposed to go through uh some more practical tips but since i'm doing the questions right now i am gonna do it at the end um and we're also gonna post them on the blog along with this recording so again if you have to go thank you so much and if you are staying then let's go to more questions um Uh, someone said, please explain exhale into your hands when hands are nowhere near. Um, I don't know if I said uh, exhale into your hands. I meant just exhale in general. Uh, when you, I said push your breath out. Um, I don't believe I said to exhale into your hands. So I'm sorry if that uh, was something that you mis, uh, misheard. When I try to meditate, my mind gets busier and louder. How to quiet it? Focus on what is your mind trying to tell you? I don't think it's necessarily that you have to quiet it, but just become aware of what's going on and try to bring it to your breath. You know, they, there is a really good analogy for our thoughts being like, um, they call it a monkey mind, a lot of uh, like great sages. And what the monkey mind is, is a monkey that jumps from thought to thought without a correlation in between these thoughts. So you, one moment you're thinking about, oh, I have to get groceries. And then you're thinking about, uh, oh, I have to watch this show tonight. And you, there's no correlation. Oh, this thing happened five years ago. Let me revisit that. So again, somebody said focus on your breath. Yeah, that's, that's great. Focus on your breath. Focus on the sounds that are happening around you. Focus on this physical sensations like breathing in, breathing out. Uh, focus on your sit bones. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that answered it oh and i lost the question but oh no here it is okay um how can we connect with you have you got a facebook page i don't but i'm working on it i love to do more meditations it's uh, something that i love sharing with the community as of right now i have a um, i have my own wellness at meetup uh meetup group that I offer to the meetup employees because I'm actually a meetup employee myself. If um, y'all didn't read the description of the event, I'm on the support team. So actually, if you run into any trouble meetup related and you write into our support team, I would be one of the people to help you out. But yeah, I'm working on it. So <laughs> um, one of my coworkers just told me to start a public group. Maybe, maybe for sure. I, it's something I am considering. 
Is it really important to exhale through the mouth? I seem to prefer to inhale and exhale through my nose. No, that's not, it's not important at all. If you prefer to go to inhale, exhale through your nose, please do that. This is, um, meditation is such a personal practice. And so really whatever um, you feel more comfortable with, as long as you do it, right? It doesn't really matter how. Um, what do you do when during meditation thoughts start to spiral and you can't turn them off? I believe I kind of touched on this with um, bringing back, bringing it back to the present moment. Um, yeah, just coming back to the space, to your thoughts. Uh, it's helpful to, uh, if you're just starting out to meditate, find a guide. Uh, there are so many apps. Um, I have, I use this app called Calm. It has lots of um, great meditations. There's also a lot. There's also a lot of meditations on Spotify, YouTube. There's so many free resources out there. So start with a guidance. So this way you don't have to listen to your thoughts, but you can listen to this person. And then another little plug <laughs> for meditation. I mean, sorry, for journaling. If your thoughts start to spiral, what would it look like if you were to write them down? Whenever I experience this and I take out my journal and I sometimes would write for like 30 minutes straight, I feel a lot better because I can just get it out. So I'd recommend trying that. Um, any tips on self-guided meditation? I love guided meditations, but I struggle when meditating without a guide. Yeah, totally. Um, counting. So maybe you inhale for one, exhale for two, inhale for three, exhale for four, go all the way up to 10 and then repeat and then repeat. Uh, you can also do the senses. Uh, I like to work in threes. So for example, you could ground, start you know, with three deep breaths and then try to think of three things that you hear around you and then actually say to yourself, like I hear the sound of my own breath. I hear the wind outside. I hear someone's footsteps. And then you go to um, three things that you can physically feel. So you might say, I feel the ground beneath my body. I feel my hands on my lap. I feel the air going in and out of my body. And then the other three is um, opening your eyes and looking around you and again, finding three things. So you might uh, say, oh, I, I see the chair, I see the light, I see the ceiling, and just really like focusing in on it and then doing it again. So I hope that was helpful. That's what I love to do. These three um, things I hear, feel, and see. Um, name of the poem, again, Guest House by Rumi. Is there any tips on creating a space for meditation? Uh, I just like having a cushion, <laughs> just uh, something to elevate my hips. You can find amazing meditation cushions online, or you can just use pillows. And uh, sometimes I like to use smoke. I don't have it to show you. I usually have a Palo Santo stick that I light just to clear the space, maybe an incense, be careful, don't set your house on fire. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it. I am going to answer just one more question because I wanna get through some slides. Uh, can meditation help to change our world for a better future? Yes. Yes, I so strongly believe that it can. I think if everybody took a moment to meditate uh, once they got up or whenever throughout the day, I think we would just be a much better place. And I am sure that I'm not alone in thinking that. And I can also, speaking for myself, I know that when I take the time to meditate, I am just a better human overall. So if I'm a better human the world has already changed slightly and so what would it look like if we were all to do that <sighs> okay yeah lots of more questions that I'm sorry I'm not gonna get to but I am going to uh, 
uh, go to the slides that I've prepared. Just one moment. I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, some practical tips. If you want to host your own event, uh, one of them is to add another activity to the event, like journaling, breath work, or sharing, something that you know that I did. I think this is completely optional. You, the, All of these are completely optional, and it's for you to figure out if it's something you want to include, but for me, it helps with engagement. Uh, when I first started out, I would just do a 30 minute straight meditation and it might be a little challenging for beginners to keep up. So it helps to have other uh, things for them to go into. And with the sharing, I love having a sharing uh, circle at the end of my event and following it up with questions like, what came up for you that you'd like to share with the group? Uh, what were some challenges that you faced? I find that it really helps to bring the community closer together. Uh, the next one is making the event more beginner friendly. Uh, and that's because you might have a lot of beginners, people who've never done this and that's okay. Everybody has to start somewhere. And I think it's really important not to lose someone when they're just starting out with meditation then maybe they're a little curious about it and they try meditating and it's really hard and it's really hard to follow and that might mean they might never come back so yeah i would encourage you to make it as beginner friendly as possible and then you'd notice regulars coming to your event and then you could make it more challenging you could grow together um, the next one is experiment with the date and time of the event. Um, this is, again, optional, but I found that it helped me, especially because I host most of my events during work hours. And it was a little hard to um, find a time that works for everybody. It's always hard. So at first I would do the same one every, um, oops, sorry about that. I would do the same one, uh, same time every week. And it would just not work for a lot of people. So now I go all over the place throughout the week. Sometimes it'll be in the morning or in the evening. And this allows for more people to come. Um, allowing extra time for attendees to settle in. This is uh, important. You'll note that we did it in the beginning especially because it's an online event you might have people joining in the middle or being a little bit late so you want to give it a few minutes for everybody to arrive and instead of starting right at the time you said you would on the dot um, and then another one is be mindful of the waiting room uh, this is a zoom option that i think you can enable when you host an event uh, sometimes you might have someone waiting and without realizing. So you just want to be aware if there's somebody trying to enter. And then the last but not least is to go over some housekeeping at the beginning of the event. So right as you start, just, um, yeah, ask uh, if, anyone, if it's anyone's first time using Zoom, and it very well might be, then you might follow it up with, uh, hey, at the bottom left of your screen, there is a little microphone, and that is how you mute yourself. Please stay muted unless told so otherwise. And then any other rules or something you want to go over before the event. Uh, yeah, and then one more tip that I didn't put up there, but I think is so important, and it's to do a self-reflection at the end of uh, hosting your event, just to ask yourself, how, how do I think that went? Is there anything I could do to improve and make it better next time? Were there some things that I would probably not include again? And yeah, and that way you can grow and just become a better facilitator and an organizer. 
yeah, that is, I have my notes here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, uh, that brings the end of my session. Again, thank you so much for joining. I hope that it was useful. And uh, we will see you at the next event. Bye, everybody.